Hey everyone, this is Nate with Terminally Ballistic. This is what I hope to be the first of many videos to come. And to start off with, I'm going to show you something you're probably already familiar with. This is an AR pistol with a folding brace. Now many reviewers in the past, many content producers have done who knows how many reviews and videos about AR pistols, as well as the ammunition that they fire. But the problem I found when I first got this rifle was that most of those reviews focus on barrels no shorter than 10.5 inches. So if you have a weapon like this, you probably call it a truck gun, a backpack gun, whatever you call it, it is short, compact, and easily concealable for a very specific reason. Unfortunately, the drawback of having such a short weapon with such a short barrel is reduced muzzle velocity. Reduced muzzle velocity results in a lack of penetration, lack of possible fragmentation or expansion, but also such a short barrel offers concealability, maneuverability, and it's lightweight. So it's kind of a trade-off. This isn't meant to be a long-range precision rifle. This is meant to be more of an oh shit kind of gun. With that in mind, when I picked up this rifle, I decided I owed it to myself to figure out what the best possible ammunition I could run inside of it would be. So I scoured the internet, talked to some friends, colleagues, people from the industry, and put together a list of possible candidates. So this video is focusing on one test of one type of ammunition. And it's the ammunition that I thought most likely to suit my purposes the best. This ammunition is the Hornady 75 grain Tactical Application Police SBR ammunition. I know that's a long name, but basically it's their tap round for the SBR. So here we have the ammunition for today's test. This is the Hornady 5.56mm 75 grain Tactical Application Police SBR ammo. According to the manufacturer, this ammunition uses a much faster than standard burning powder, which should result in greatly reduced muzzle flash, should be kinder to suppressors, and also has the added benefit of being 6 to 7 decibels quieter than standard ammunition. Again, these are all manufacturer's claims, but I would like to put them to the test. As for the round itself, this is a Spire Point bullet in a very high quality cartridge. Now, a Spire Point is also sometimes referred to as a Spitzer, very similar to a Soft Point. Basically, you have a thin copper jacket that is hollow, filled with lead, and left with a soft lead tip exposed. Compared to full metal jacket rounds, this will have reduced penetration, but much better penetration than expanding rounds. Compared to expanding rounds, no, this won't have the opportunity to expand or have fragmentation as much, but it will have much better chances of that than FMJ rounds. So basically, this is a best case compromise between the two. Now, out of my 8.1 inch barrel, I'm not sure whether I will get fragmentation, but I hope to see. Muzzle velocities from a 10.5 inch barrel, which is what this ammunition was designed and rated down to, are supposedly around 2200 feet per second. With my 8.1 inch barrel, I expect to get about 2000 feet per second muzzle velocity. So the question becomes, how effective is this ammunition with such a short barrel? We will find out. On to the testing portion of this video, which I wish was more exciting, but the range was packed, it was loud. Recording a video there was not very conducive. That being said, I still want to share the method of testing with you that I conducted. I made an at-home ballistics gelatin block as close to FBI protocols as I could. Mixed 10% 250 bloom gelatin powder with 90% warm water. Mixed well, stored in the fridge, allowed to chill, removed, remelted, 
to release any trapped air, mixed again to increase the consistency throughout, and then chilled again for 72 hours before taking it to shoot. During transport, I stored it in a pre-chilled cooler, and before I shot it, I tested it with an internal thermometer, which read at 39 degrees. Perfect, right? Except I didn't test it with a BB gun. Sorry, I'm not spending that money on an air rifle just to have a calibrated ballistic gel block. Regardless, the results speak for themselves. 25 yard gel shot, which gave me the best results up close for viewing and review. Even at such reduced muzzle velocity, you can tell the impact is quite something. In the clip coming up, you will notice that the penetration starts and then approximately half an inch later, an extreme bit of cavitation which continues for approximately seven inches. You can also tell in the upcoming clip that there is fragmentation. That is awesome from such a short barrel. So here we have it, my review overall for the Hornady 75 grain TAP SBR round fired out of my 8.1 inch barrel 5.56 millimeter platform. Hornady advertises that this round should have a greatly reduced muzzle flash compared to standard ammunition, which I can confirm. I have fired this round not just outdoors today, but as well as on indoor ranges, and it is a world of difference. Standard ammunition from such a short barrel, you get that flamethrower effect. Now there is still some muzzle flash. It's almost impossible to completely eliminate that, but it is greatly reduced with this ammunition. Hornady also advertises a six to seven decibel level of sound reduction compared to standard ammunition. Now I did not have a decibel reader out there. I've tried the apps for the phone, they are not suitable to the task. What I can say, just based on my personal experience, it is quieter. Six to seven decibels quieter, I can't really say. But it definitely is more comfortable to the ear, and the concussion is less. Now, as far as terminal ballistics are concerned, this is the first round I've test using a gel block. That being said, I'm not disappointed. Now, I'm not disappointed in the round, disappointed in myself being the first time I've ever tested using actual ballistics gelatin. I have some things to learn. But that being said, the round itself performed fairly well. Now, I knew going into it that any 5.56 five, fired from such a short barrel is going to experience significantly reduced muzzle velocity. I was shooting at about probably 2,000 feet per second muzzle velocity based on other people's chrono readings and the barrel length that I have. That being said, there aren't many rounds in that caliber that are advertised to do much of anything. This round exceeded my expectations. Cavitation initiated approximately an inch after penetration of the gel block. The cavitation seemed fairly significant and fragmentation was evident. I found several pieces floating, well, suspended inside of the gel block. That's surprising. Yes, the rounds ended up piercing through the back of the gel block, but again, that's my fault. I only made the gel block about 15, 14 and a half inches because I needed to, to fit inside of the cooler that I had. Regardless, the combination of cavitation at such a short distance of penetration plus fragmentation of the round itself leads me to believe that this ammunition will be very, very effective for close quarters engagements, which is what I need. Now, are there better rounds out there? Possibly. I look forward to trying more out in the future and providing more views. And hopefully you'll continue to watch. And if you happen to have a similar rifle, a similar setup, and have the same questions yourself, maybe these videos will answer some of those questions for you and take the guesswork out. 
Again, this is Nate with Terminally Ballistic. Thank you for tuning in. And until next time.